Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning back into the Queen Amadai Shakur show. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click the notification bell and click the word all so that you're notified each time that I go live. And also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Queen Amadai Shakur and on Twitter at DGoddess27. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, we got Mike L, Judy, Nick, Nick Joe, Donna. Hello, hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Empress, Brittany. Ooh, Akata. Are you Akata? Patrick, Jawara. Okay. Brittany. Okay, so let's get into it. So we're going to be talking about the stages of consciousness. And the reason I'm talking about this at this particular time is because it is very imperative for us to all raise our levels of consciousness, right? Because with all the stuff that's going on, I keep reminding you guys that we are engaged in spiritual warfare. So in spiritual warfare, we need to use the full capacity of our minds. We need to be consciously aware and we need to be raising our vibrational frequencies and energy. And I told you that the elite have been trying to, through the use of media and propaganda, the lamestream media that is in propaganda, they have been trying to lower our vibrational frequency so they can usher in the Antichrist, which is the demonic satanic energy that they are bringing in via Project CERN. And the Antichrist, again, is not a physical person, but it is actually an energy that they are trying to harness, okay, for nefarious purposes, no less. So with that all being said, all of these things that I'm going to speak about are within the Bible in allegorical form and in context. And also the, the book of Revelations speaks of a lot of the things that are going on right now. Now, with that being said, some people feel that we have seven stages of consciousness, right? And there, in my opinion, is four stages of consciousness. Not seven, there's four, and there are seven stages of development. Now, some people consider development the same as consciousness. I consider them separate things that work together. Okay, so four stages of consciousness and seven stages of development, and I'm going to be discussing all of those. So with that being said, the four stages of consciousness are earth, water, air, and fire. Okay, so when you're on the earth level of consciousness, which is the first level, that's the lowest level right? Because on earth, this is depicted in the book of Genesis in the Bible when it talks about Noah and the ark. Now, in the story of Noah and the ark, you remember there was a great flood that was coming. It was going to destroy all of the bad people. And so Noah had to build the ark and take, you know, two of each animal and uh, two of each animals onto the ark. But also the part that people often leave out is that some of the, that um, some of the animals, he took seven pairs of them, right? took seven because those were the animals that were beneficial, most beneficial, right? So that all being said, okay, in the book of Genesis, when they talk about Noah's Ark, they talk about destruction. When everything was in chaos, the people were being killed because of the bad deeds they had been doing. They didn't listen when Noah warned them that the flood was coming. And then when Noah was on the flood, remember, the people who didn't listen to begin with, they came running and trying to get on the ark, but it was too late. That is all chaos, confusion, and pandemonium. So when you're operating on the lowest level of consciousness, you will find yourself having numerous problems. You will find yourself always stressed out, always worried about things. You know, you'll feel like nothing is going right. These are the, this is the stage where people feel and experience low self-esteem, self-loathsome -loath feelings and things like that. Always thinking someone's out to get them. Fearful. Fear is on the lowest level. That's why they try to use fear mongering to keep our vibrational frequencies down because they're keeping you by doing so. They're trying to keep you in the lowest level of consciousness because the higher you raise your consciousness, the more in tune that you become to the universe and more spiritually in tune with everything that's going on around you. And you start using actively using the op optic thalamus and your third eye, you start using that and seeing past things, past the smoke screens, right? And seeing past the matrix that we in fact live in. And if you think about the movie, The Matrix, the woman who wrote that, Sophia Stewart, okay? I did a live on her two years ago on Facebook and how the, the whole theory was stolen from her, right? 
But with that all being said, the original name of the book that she wrote about the Matrix, it was called The Third Eye. Okay? So the Matrix depicts all of these things that I'm about to talk about. So like I said, when you're on the Earth level, which is the lowest stage, stage one, you are in fact at the you know, involved in chaos and all of that. Now, in order to rise above this, you have to go into the second stage, which is the stage of water. You have to rise into the water. Now, in the Bible, it talks about baptizing, being baptized. And, you know, in church, they tell you to, um, you need to be baptized to wash away your sins. That is an allegory. That is mythical. That is a fictitious story. That is just something that is used to have a hidden meaning, okay? You can't really just get in a tub of water, get in a pool of water, or just go to church and get in the water and have the pastor pour water on top of you, and that's going to wash away your sins magically. That's not how it works. In reality, when you basically rise into the water, then there is a flood within you, a flood of all of the negative things that you've been dealing with, all of the stressful things you've been going through. All of those things can be washed away. And in fact, you are baptized. Okay. That is when you're baptized, not literally getting in water, but rising to another level of consciousness. Okay. You need to turn that down because I don't want that on my life. That's going to be give me a copyright strike. So cut that down, please. So with that all being said, excuse me. So with that all being said, you have to rise into the next level of consciousness, which is the water. And when you rise into the water, it literally destroys all of the negativity, all of the feelings of chaos and pandemonium and low self-esteem, all of the pes uh, pessimism, right? You become more optimistic, all right? And so with that being said, it is destroying those feelings and those emotions and everything, just as the flood destroyed the earth in Genesis, right? So when they say in the Bible that the earth will be destroyed by fire, it won't be destroyed by water, but it'll be fire next time, right? So in the second stage, the earth has been destroyed by the water because you've risen to the second stage. Now, from the second stage, you have to rise into the air. Now, when you rise into the air, this is where you become into your Christ-like consciousness, okay? In the Bible, in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians verse uh, chapter 4, verse 17, it talks about meeting Christ in the air. It says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. OK, so you're not really going to just go up into the clouds, really going to go up into the sky and meet Jesus. That's not what it is. That's an allegory. OK, a mythological story to use to prove a point. When you rise into the third level, <clears throat> excuse me, when you rise into the third level, the third stage of consciousness, which is the air. When you get to the air, you will be absent of thoughts. You won't be worried. You won't be stressed out. You will have to meditate to get to this level. The only way to rise from the lowest level of consciousness into the higher levels, the only way to do it is through meditation. You have to meditate. There's no other way you can do it. And with that being said, when you rise to the air, you will be absent of thoughts. When you meditate, you're not thinking. You're freeing your mind. You're relaxing your mind, right? So you rise into the air. And at that point, that's why they say you will meet Jesus in the air. You will meet Christ in the air, the Lord in the air, because at that point, you will be in your Christ-like consciousness. Now, those of you who remember when I talked about this before, the Christ within, when I talked about the claustrum, the oil that comes from the claustrum once a month, right? This sacred oil called the chrism or Christos. And this oil goes down the 33 vertebrae of the spine, down to the solar, the solar plexus, and then it travels back up after it gets the energy from the solar plexus, goes to the sacred plexus, then travels back up the 33 vertebrae of the spine, which is why they say Christ died at the age of 33, right? Then it travels on upward, and then it goes across the vagus nerve. Then from there, it touches the optic thalamus. And once it does that, it illuminates inside of you. It illuminates. That's why they say a light bulb came on in your head. If you remember, I told you this before. Now, when you achieve this, which you are capable of doing this once a month, 12 times a year, and you have to do this by eating clean, right? Drinking distilled spring and alkaline water, okay? 
refraining from smoking cigarettes, you know, um, consuming alcohol, sweets, and all of those things. You have to eat healthy, a plant-based diet, and you have to abstain from sexual intercourse and all of these things to achieve this Christ-like energy, right? Some call it the Kundalini energy, okay? So with that all being said, when you achieve this, you're in your Christ-like consciousness state. So you rise into the air. Now from there, the next level is the fourth stage of consciousness, which is the fire. So when you rise into the fire from the air, that is when you create, you have a new mind. Your entire mind has been you know, it has ascended, right? So you take on new ideas, new thoughts, new ways of thinking, and you're at the highest level of your consciousness. With that all being said, now you go back to where it says in the Bible that it won't be water, but fire next time. So the first time that you got rid of the earth, you destroyed all of the negative things that were holding you down by rising into the water, right? The second stage. So the water destroyed the earth, which is the chaos and the pandemonium you experience. But when you get to the fourth stage, there is fire. It won't be, it won't be water, but it'll be fire next time. So that's why they say that in the Bible, this is what they're talking about. It's all allegorical form. Okay. So with that being said, once you rise into the fire, you have now transcended or ascended, right? You have risen like the, the um, energy from the solar plexus. It has traveled back up, right? It has ascended high into the air, high into your, within your body, right? So with this being said, this is what they mean when they talk about going to heaven for salvation. The salvation occurs within you. OK, this is a cosmic salvation. So it occurs within the body. You ascend to a higher level of consciousness, just like in the Bible. It says that Jesus ascended into the heavens. When you ascend to a higher level of consciousness, you are in heaven. OK, because the word heaven in Latin is colum and the word colum means air. You have ascended up into the air to a higher level of consciousness, the Christ within, the Christ-like consciousness, okay? Thank you, Blue. Okay, so now that we have discussed that, and, and, and let me tell you people, the reason I'm telling you this, like I said, is because of all this stuff that's about to transpire, all of these things that are about to happen, right? With that all being said, Thanks for tuning in to this metaphysical masterclass, Queen. I'm dying to drop in. <laughs> Take a moment. <laughs> oh, Bugenis, thank you. Okay, so now with that all being said, right? Now that you have now that you have ascended and you're at the highest level, now it is time to start taking on your seven stages of development. Okay? So now let's talk about that. And here's the thing, like I was saying, you have to harness this energy, just like they're harnessing that evil satanic energy that they're bringing in through a portal, i.e. a black hole in the earth, because they're trying to bring in this antichrist, right? Through Project CERN, they're harnessing that energy. This is what they're doing. They're going to use it for nefarious reasons when they continue to engage in spiritual warfare with us. OK, so with that being said, we have to harness this Christ within energy. OK, this Christ like consciousness. We have to harness it. That's the only way to defeat them. You have to take on this energy. And if you are not engaging in the things that you need to do to get there, you will be those who are left behind. OK, in the Bible, it also says only a remnant of Israel shall be saved. A remnant. We are Israel. OK, black people, we are Israel. With that being said, if only a remnant shall be saved, what do you think the other people? Why do you think they're not going to be saved? Because they're not going to be able to withstand the psychological and spiritual warfare that we are not now going to be engaged in. They're not going to be able to obtain or, you know, to get to the higher levels of consciousness. They're going to be low vibrational, worry, fear, right? All of that anger. All of that is low vibrational frequencies. It's going to stop you, prohibit you from using your spiritual warfare tactics that you're supposed to be cloaked in. You're supposed to be cloaked in the whole armor of God. Rising to a higher level of consciousness is part of that. 
Okay, so now let's talk about the seven seven stages of spiritual development. Some people consider this the seven stages of consciousness. And this word, uh, this number seven is um, very important in, num in numerology. Also pay attention, you have seven chakras, right? So you have the seven stages of spiritual development. Okay, now you are a spiritual being. We are all spiritual beings living a human experience. And here's another thing. You know, I always tell you guys, I'm not afraid of death. I don't fear death. You know why I don't fear death? Because death is an illusion. It is an illusion. If you ever saw the movie with Tom Cruise and... um. I can't remember that lady's name that played it with him, but the movie with Tom Cruise called Vanilla Sky. So it was like after after uh, death, they were or before they died, they were able to purchase something called the Lucid Dream. Okay, so whereas when they died, they could just go into this other uh, this other world, right, where they were like still existing. In reality, there is no death. If you think about it. When you were in school, you were taught that energy is it cannot be created or destroyed. It's transferred and transformed from one thing to another. With that being said, we are energy, right? The splitting of the atom, the splitting of the atom, atom, A-T-O-M. That's where they get atom from in the Bible, A-D-A-M. The splitting of the atom, that created the splitting of the energy. That's where they bring, they introduce Eve in the book of Genesis. When Eve is introduced, then there comes the serpent. Now, the serpent in the book of Genesis represents uh, temptation. It represents the choice between good and evil because Eve was given a choice and she chose to do what was considered evil, right? She sinned. So Eve represents, she, is the, she represents thoughts, okay? When she's introduced in the Bible, that is like an allegory for the representation of thoughts when they start to think for themselves. And then comes the choice between good and evil when the serpent comes along, right? And then you have comes next, Cain and Abel. Okay, so Cain was evil. He killed his brother Abel, who was good, right? So that is when you start seeing that the effects of choosing between good or evil. And sometimes this causes a conflict within people because we know we should do good, but it's so easy to do bad. Right. So this is all having to do with the consciousness and the low vibrational frequencies that people exist on without whether wittingly or unwittingly. OK, so you're in a spirit, you're a spiritual being and you have the potential to fully embrace your spirituality. However, like everything in life, uh, embarking on your spiritual path is a choice in life. You are presented with several choices leading to new stages of development. Now, initially, most progress along the same path. But at certain points, you have choices to make, whether to stay immersed in the status quo world or to explore the splendors of your spiritual journey. These choices can appear at any time during your life. The key to stay alert and is to stay alert and to listen to the wisdom of your heart. Okay? Now, stage one, that is innocence. When you're in stage one, you're in the innocent phase. You know, they tell you, that we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. They tell you that in church, right? They say you are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That's not true. How are you born in sin? When you're born, you don't even know anything. You haven't done anything. How can you be born into sin? That's not true. You're born in innocence, okay? You start sinning after you choose between right and wrong, after you develop thoughts. Infants don't have thoughts have the thoughts. They don't know how to think, right? So with that all being said, when you get to the point that you can make decisions and think and make choices for yourself, that is when you start to sin. You're not born into sin. Okay. So that's just crazy. Okay. So anyway, you're born into a material world where your life is dominated by your lower three chakras your lower three chakras, okay? You enter the world in a state of innocence. As long as you are healthy and have a loving family, you live in a world of joy and bliss. You still have a strong connection to the, the divine and the field of the absolute, absolute from which your consciousness must emerge. Now, the spiritual being is still very much awake. However, for most of this memory, start, for most of this, memory starts to fade as you are taught to fit in, okay? You start 
thinking that you have to fit in with everybody else, go with the flow. You start listening to your friends and all of that, right? And you become distracted by the world that is around you. And very few people can manage to maintain their divine connection and enjoy their spiritual greatness. You see, people often cave to peer pressure. They start doing things that other people encourage them to do. In fact, a lot of people start listening to the negative things that people tell them, and they start lowering their own vibrational frequency by listening to negative people. That's why I told you, I cannot listen to negative people. I cannot deal with negativity for too long. If someone is negative, I try to speak to them to encourage them and motivate them, inspire them. But if they continuously go on that path of negativity and whining and grind, you know, complaining all of that about how they are and how they feel about themselves. That's like a psyche vampire. Like I told you, it drains you of energy. And so you can't move forward. That's why you can't live a positive life when you're dealing with negative people all of the time. So they stop you from being great. For example, you may have an idea, something you want to try to do. It may be a new job venture. It may be someone you want to date. And then the negative person will come and say, oh, that doesn't make any sense. That's not going to work. You shouldn't even try that. You're wasting your time. Or why do you want to date them? You can do better than that. Or they're no good for you. They start telling you these negative things and then you start doubting yourself. You start listening to the negativity. Many people will start listening to negative things and are easily influenced and persuaded into going down the wrong path as opposed to doing what their first mind told them to do okay then the second stage is fear and ego now you know in the bible it says pride goeth before the fall this is true because pride has to do with the ego when you are egotistical someone who thinks you know everything or someone who thinks that you're better than other people someone who's just arrogant right these people often fall because they put themselves so high on a pedestal. And then when things don't go the way they anticipated, expected, or wanted, then they come crashing down. And their, their whole thing is to try to feel better than everyone else, to try to be ahead of the curve, right? So with that being said, ego is not good to, you know, to allow your ego to lead. The ego will get you in trouble. When you see like two people arguing, and you know how we read in the news all the time that somebody got shot because they were arguing with somebody or whatever. Somebody got to a fight and somebody pulled out a gun and shot them. They do this because of ego, because they can't stand the agony of defeat. These are people who don't want to lose. They always want to come out on top. In life, you can't always come out on top. That just is not realistic. But some people feel like they have to always come out on top. And many people come out on top or try to come out on top by bringing pe other people down. OK, low vibrational frequencies. Donald Trump is led by ego. And it's, it's funny that you mentioned Trump, because here's the thing. Think about Trump's relationship to Obama. Now, remember how Trump would always say all these negative things about Obama. But in fact, the thing is, Trump is arrogant. So he won't admit that he actually admires Obama's intelligence. He admires his intellect. Trust me, he does. He admires his intellect, but at the same time, he hates it. Okay? That is his ego. That's what happens when you deal with ego. Okay? So now, and I took some notes because I don't want to leave anything out. So with that all being said, as you grow, the ego emerges, and soon you realize that you are completely at the mercy of everything that is around you. Because here's the thing. People who are full of ego, you know what they do? They worry about what other people think. They spend all of their lives trying to impress other people. You can't impress everybody all the time, so why even try? I never try to impress people. The only person I try to impress is myself. When I can look at myself in the mirror and say, I know I did what I was supposed to do. I know I did a good job. I know I gave it my all. That's who I'm trying to impress. I'm not going to try to impress other people because other people are often very critical of us. And when other people are critical of you, it really doesn't matter what you do or say, they will find something to pick apart to try to bring you down much of the time. So it's not good to try to impress other people and to in fact worry about what other people think. If you live your life worrying about what other people think, that will stress you out and you will never attain the spirituality that you truly need to achieve.
Okay, so now with that being said, the pure love you have experienced up until then begins to overshadow, becomes overshadowed by fear. And it then starts to correspond with your emotions. You find that in order for you to get what you want, you have to please those in charge. That's what many people start to think. And you develop your personality and begin creating all these stories that shape and define your life. Have you ever seen people who are pathological liars? Do you know why people are pathological liars? Because they want to please people, because they want to impress other people. So they will lie about their credentials, lie about things they've done, lie about what they have, lie about what they've achieved, always try to make themselves seem more than what they are, because they are so bent on trying to impress other people. Okay? That's what they do. And then the third stage is power, okay? Now, in your desire to overcome your fears, you create success in your life very often. You become educated, start, start a career. You want to have control over your life to eliminate fear. You accumulate things that give you a sense of security, right? A lot of people want to be in control. That's the thing that a lot of people want. They are control freaks or they may be power hungry. These are people who feel the need. It makes them feel better to feel like they're in control. But here's the thing. You can't be in control of everything. There are things in life that we have no control over. So there is no need to try to be power hungry. There is no need to try to be a control freak because you cannot control everything. Okay. Some things you just can't control, period, no matter how you try. So there's no need to sit there and think, oh, you know, I have to be in control of this. You can't be in control of anything. OK, I mean, I'm sorry, not anything, but you can't be in control of everything. OK, and then you have choices. Now, for many people, further growth and growth and spiritual development ends here because you have to choose to continue to be consumed or you may choose to continue to be consumed with material desires. You seek more and more power and control. Your life becomes self-centered and you remain on the third stage of development, like the third stage of consciousness is what some people would in fact call it. Because think about this, people, somebody said, goodness, Randy Bo says, yes, exactly like President Trump. <laughs> With that being said, right, that is true. With that being said, you remain at the third stage because for the simple fact, if you are all caught up with material things and all, you know, worried about what people are thinking, and this is the thing too, pay attention. The people who are always out here purchasing expensive name brands, the people who get their stimulus checks and go stand in line at the mall to get the next newest Jordans, those people are so worried about impressing others. That's what they are. They are so concerned about what other people think. Let me tell you something. Like when people go and get married and they have these big extravagant weddings, they pay all these thousands and thousands of dollars. That is so ridiculous to me. You know why that's ridiculous? Because instead of going and have this big um, extravagant wedding, you could take that money and put it in a trust fund for your children. Or you could take that money and per use it to purchase a new house or whatever. You could put it in, you know, invest it in something. But you spend all that money on a big, huge wedding. Why do you do that? Because you're worried about what other people think. That's what it's all about. Ego. You have to put on this big extravagant wedding because everybody has to know that you did it big. This is why many people do these things. And that all has to do with pride and the ego. That's what that is. When you have these elaborate things, you're not having them for yourself. You're having them for everyone else who's going to come because you want to impress everyone who shows up. That's just what it is. Don't let them fool you. That's exactly what it is. Now, for others, a feeling that there is more to life begins at, the, at dawn. OK, rather than just accumulating possessions and power, you look for a deeper meaning to life. You start asking yourself, why am I here? What is my life's purpose? What did the most high bring me here to do? What is my calling? You start asking yourself these questions because you are thinking deeper thoughts than just what is on the surface. As a lot of people just think of, you know, they think of just getting up, going to work, you know, making their money, going shopping and doing these things or whatever, living extravagant lifestyles, driving fancy cars, impressing everyone else. This is what many people think about. But you start to when you start to awaken spiritually, you continue on to stage four. 
Now, stage four is the giving stage. In this stage, you begin to realize that there is more to life than personal power and material gain. You ask yourself, how can you help others? How can you serve the world around you? You become comfortable with giving as well as receiving. So you want to give to people, right? Some people are selfless, selfish. They don't want to give. They want everything to come to them. So these people have not risen to the fourth stage of development yet, right? When you get in the fourth stage of development, you will be willing to help other people. You will be, you know, um, a shoulder for someone to cry on. You will try to encourage and motivate and aspire, you know, inspire people, right? You will try to do charitable things like feeding the homeless. You know what I'm saying? Um, trying to help people who are in a bad time, a bad situation. You would do those things. That's because giving, that is something that pleases the spirit. It pleases the soul. But some people are selfish and all they want to do is take. You may have some people that you know. They only call you when they want something. When the phone rings, you know that they want something. I have people like that that I know, okay? I know when I see, see their uh, name in my phone, I know instantly they want something. Sometimes I might even answer the phone and say, yeah, what do you want? Because I know they want something because that's the only time you hear from them, right? Those are selfish people who have not reached the fourth stage of development yet, okay? However, giving can also create a sense of power. Now, some people will use this because remember, with anything good, it can be used for bad, okay? So with that being said, just like fire, for example, you can use fire to warm your home during the winter. You can use it to cook your food, right? Fire can be used for good, of course, but you can also use fire to commit arson, right? To burn things down, do something destructive. So it can be used for good or bad. It depends on the person and the intent. So with that being said, some people will use giving as a tool of power. They will give you something, but they have ulterior motives and they want something in return, okay? Now at this stage, giving can often still be ego-driven. You can give because you expect some sort of recognition or because it makes you feel good about yourself. Yes, some people do things for others just to make themselves feel good. So they can say, yeah, you know, I did that for them. You ever have somebody do something for you and they go and brag and tell everyone else what they did for you? Those are people who are using giving to attain power and to, you know, just make themselves feel good. They are ego driven in their giving. OK, they're not doing it from the heart. They're doing it from ego which means they're doing it just for recognition and just to say, yeah, I had to do this for you. And they can throw it up in your face later. Now, then you have the second choice. Now you can continue to give from the level of ego, always expecting something in return for your giving, but this obviously cannot get a lot of merit and you can do many good things in the world. However, it leaves a constriction to your full spiritual growth because when you're doing things solely based on ego and only because you want to get recognition or have it to use against someone later that is really lowering your vibrational frequency only when you give from the heart and you mean what you're doing and you're doing it just out of kindness and you don't expect anything in return and you don't have any ulterior motives that is when you have reached spiritual enlightenment and you are on to the next level or the next stage of development and growth. The opportunity for your second choice is when you get, when you begin to give from the level of love and compassion without any concern for recognition or reward. You give because it's self, you're selfless and you are truly on your spiritual journey. And that is when it starts. Now, the fifth stage is the seeker. Now you begin with your regular spiritual practices, regular spiritual practices. I have them. I have some of them. Some of my regular spiritual practices are I meditate at least once a day. I may meditate in the morning when I first rise, rise from my sleep, or I may meditate at night before I go to bed. Now, another thing about meditation, you need to listen to tones or music that enhance your spirituality or that, um, help you with your meditation, right? Because they keep you relaxed and they hide, they they ri raise your vibrational frequencies. Like when I meditate, I listen to meditative music. Um, I My favorite is the Native American flute music. I love to listen to that. 
for one, because I'm a Native American. So I guess that's just in my spirit. But I love to listen to Native American flute music. In fact, I listen to it when I sleep at night. I play it, you know, I play it softly while I'm asleep at night. It helps me with my rest. So with that being said, you want to listen to different tones. You can listen to the singing bowls, right? The Tibetan bongs, things like that. That all enhances your levels of consciousness, okay? So the longing for enlightenment starts to grow within you. When you start to want to become more spiritual, you start wanting to practice things that make you, that enhance your creativity and your spirituality. You may start working with crystals. That's something that I do often. I have been working with crystals for years. Okay, our ancestors, unbeknownst to many of us, they use crystals. They use it for healing. They use it for many different things. Crystals and stones have energy, okay? And even in the Bible, when it says, put on the whole armor of God, which for the high priest, that was the, the breastplates. And the breastplates had the, the uh, 12 stones that represented the 12 tribes of Israel. Those stones and crystals have power and energy in them. They came from the most high. So with that being said, you also have the 12 stones that represent the zodiac, right? The zodiacs are the, uh, the, the um, constellations that fall within the direct path of the sun. We're all born under one of the zodiacs, right? So with that being said, for each zodiac, there is a specific birthstone. So there's 12 birthstones. Those are the same stones that are in the breastplates that represent the 12 tribes of Israel. So you may want to work with stones, right? When you become a more spiritual person, you may start, start studying, you know, stones and crystal works and things like that. When I start my spiritual channel, those are some of the things that I'll be talking about. Okay, now your decisions now come mostly from the fourth chakra when you start you know, becoming more spiritually in tune when you start reaching the point of enlightenment and the, the enlightenment starts growing within you, making you want to learn more. So the fourth chakra, that is the heart center. So you're doing things from the heart. You're genuinely doing these things, not for recognition, you know, not to be holding it against somebody or talking down on someone or making them feel like they need you. Because often people will give you things just to say, well, you needed me to do that so that you feel that you need them. OK. Then you begin to look for the deeper meaning in things. You try to understand why you are here, you know, how you can make your life more meaningful. You may study with teachers and gurus. Um, you may read books and practice techniques. You have a glimpses of goals that encourage you to remain on that path. This is true. Now, when I first started coming into my spirituality, I wanted to know all this knowledge. I started studying astrology. I started studying numerology. You know, I started learning different languages. I started wanting to know everything. And the reason I felt like I had to learn these things is because when I discovered that we only use 10% of our brain, I thought that was so interesting because you see, out of the entire universe, Stephen Hawkins and other members of the scientific community, they said that there is a, a large universe out there, but we are only able to see 10% of it. You see, you can only visibly see 10% of the universe and you only use 10% of your brain. That's called carnal knowledge, right? So when I discovered this, I said, you know what? I want to use more of my brain. I don't just want to be using 10% of my brain. Why would I not want to use more of it, right? So I started studying spirituality. I started studying and learning new things so that I would be using more of my brain power, okay? Because you can create, you know, more brain power. You can harness the energy to raise your level of brain power. You know, you have a left hemisphere of the brain and the right hemisphere, I'm a left brain person. So with that being said, I wanted to learn more and, and use more parts of my brain, right? So the throat chakra opens as you express the qualities of the heart in your life. The throat chakra. Okay, my throat chakra is open, right? That's why I love to talk. I love to give knowledge. I love to teach, okay? That is why, because I'm speaking what comes from my heart, it is in me to give, but the best thing that I like to give is knowledge, right? So 
your heart chakra and your throat chakra, they work in unison because when you do things from the heart and then your throat chakra is opened and you start thinking about the qualities of life that your heart is trying to express. OK, then you have stage six, which is the sage. OK, the cosmic consciousness dawns. Now, your mind then fully awakens and you become the witness of your actions and you realize that you are the role player in the multitude of roles that you play. The fear of death dissolves as you re realize that life is just another role. That's why I don't fear death, because death is, in fact, an illusion. When you die, right, as they call it, when they say you die, you go into the afterlife, right? It's not an afterlife. It's just a, it's a continuing life. That's what it is. Because when you die, when people leave here, they their spirit their soul simply leaves the avatar that we call a body. It just leaves and it just goes on to something else. People are reincarnated. Now, some people may not believe in that, but in fact, people are reincarnated. You come back, right? And there's documentation of people having, you know, uh, said that they've come back and they've experienced, you know, they can remember, they can come back with memories of past lives. They have past lives experiences. There's been people that have been put under hypnosis and they have spoken on these things. You understand what I'm saying? So with that being said, this is how you have to, you know, basically you have to try to raise your level of consciousness and go to your higher stages of self development to get there. Okay. Now, uh, if you have like simple yogic practices or powers, yogic powers, these become available at this point. And then, however, there is still a separation between the giver and the recipients. OK, you have the giving person inside of you. But at the same time, you are the recipients because you are receiving knowledge from different things that you are doing. Right. You are continuously achieving or obtaining knowledge. Right. So you are also the recipient. And then you move on to your third choice. Now, now, when you have reached this, this is another critical junction point. OK. In your journey. So with that being said, your mind is fully awakened. But even though some ego is still present. OK. The choice or mistake here is to believe that you are something special. Some people think they are special. They think that it's something about them that they are better than everybody else. You mistakenly think you have reached a goal and you promote yourself as such. These are people that are arrogant. OK. They think they're so special. They are full of ego. That's what that is. OK. They may talk to people in a condescending tone. They think they already know everything. So there's clearly no reason for them to learn. Now, with that being said, I'm constantly learning. Every day I try to learn something new, right? Because you can never know everything. It is so much knowledge to be obtained. So with that being said, I try to learn something every day, something new. Now, the end is, is in sight, but you have allowed the ego to hide it from view. And you remain stuck in the false sense of spiritual attainment. When people are in the false sense of spiritual attainment, these are the people who think they know everything. When in fact, no one ever could. You have to con continuously keep trying to learn and obtain and achieve knowledge. Now, the alternative choice is to recognize the ego, but not to succumb to it. You have to know when you're in ego. You have to know when you're just doing too much. Some people just do too much, okay? And that is because they are in their ego state. They are ego driven. That's what they call that. Their ego literally leads the way. As the ego is leading the way, they are not actively thinking in their spiritual mindsets. Because in a spiritual mindset, you are not focusing on ego. You are not focusing on what other people are thinking, trying to impress other people, trying to compete against other people. The only person you need to compete against is yourself. I compete against myself every day. I see how I can make myself better. What can I do to make myself better? What can I do to, to influence other people, right? By doing good or doing something beneficial to other for other people, not just for myself, but something that's going to be beneficial for other people as well. Now, ego-driven people, they just want to look down on other people and feel like they're they're above. Like, you know, I have achieved more than you in life. I mean, this is where you are. Clearly, you need me for this. That is driven by ego. And that is a lower vibrating frequency. 
So that brings down their consciousness. And many of them don't even realize it. And that is why they feel the need to have power because you don't need to have power when you are in your highest level of consciousness. Because guess what? Consciousness is power. So you don't have to be out here seeking it. You will just be in your full state of power. Okay? With that all being said. And also, the Most High, God, whoever your God is, whether it's Allah, you know, Buddha, Jesus, whomever you, you call God, God is consciousness, okay? When that's why in the Bible it says the kingdom of God is within you, the king dome, the king dome. A king wears a crown, a crown sits upon your head, a dome, they call your head a dome, right? You've heard people say in slang, oh, he got, he took one to the dome. That's because your head is considered a dome. The king dome of God is within you. Yes, it is because God is within us. God is not something uh, external from us. When people think that God is some man up in the sky behind the clouds, pulling all the strings, that's not God. That is the Wizard of Oz. I'm sorry to tell you, but that is the Wizard of Oz. If you think God is up behind, beyond the sky and up there pulling the strings and dictating what's going on down here on earth, that is not God. That is, as I said, that is the Wizard of Oz. That's just crazy. God is not external from us. God is internal within us. Okay, it says in the Bible in Psalm 82, ye are all gods for ye are born of the Most High. With that being said, we are gods. We are gods. But the Most High is the highest God. That's why we call him the Most High. Okay, the Most High God. But we are gods ourselves, right? So with that being said, God is a consciousness that dwells inside of us, inside of the brain, inside of the mind, inside of the calvaria, which they took, which in Latin, you know, that is the skull, the place of the skull, which is why in the Bible they say Jesus was crucified on Mount Calvary. Calvary comes from the word Latin calvaria, because this is the crucifixion that occurs within the skull. And also there is a cru crucifixion that occurs within the cosmic universe. Okay. So with that all being said, when you continue your journey with humility and devo devotion, your giving, your giving is done purely for the sake of giving. You don't have ulterior motives. You don't look for anything in return, even if you're not recognized. Let me give you an example. You see some of these videos that go viral and they have these people, they walk around with all this money and they go up to homeless people on the street and they're handing them out this money. Are they giving them food or they're doing something for homeless people, right? And they have to videotape this and put it on social media. Why do you think they're doing that? Do they think these homeless people want to be humiliated by being on film? While letting everybody know that they're homeless and that they need a handout? No, they're doing this because they are ego driven. They're giving to get recognition. That's what these type of people do. They want everybody to know that they did something. You can give to charities and everything like that. And nobody has to even know. You know what I'm saying? For example, when I was talking about something once, people said, you know, um, some people say things like, well, what are you all doing besides preaching on social media? What are you doing for the black community and this and that? What are you doing out on the field, boots on the ground and all of that? Here's the thing. Many people do things out in the field and boots on the ground. You just don't see what they do. And they don't come out here video recording it to show it to everybody. Because everybody doesn't need to be recognized for these things that they're doing. They do it genuinely from the heart. And when you do something from the heart, you don't care if anybody knows or not. Nobody has to know except for you and the person or persons that you're doing it for. But when people do things, I call it doing things for show, when they just want to show boat, when they just want to go around and show off, that's what they're doing. And those things are all for ego. OK, because they are attention whores. They need the attention. They thrive on attention. They want everyone to know and see that this is what they, in fact, did. That's not doing it from the heart. That's doing it to get recognition. That's doing it because you are everyone. You want everyone to see and know that you, in fact, did it. OK. Let's get the likes up, people, while I'm talking. Let's get the likes up. Like and share this video, please, if you could be so kind. And make sure to subscribe. Click the notification bell and click the word all so that you're notified, in fact, every time that I go live. Now, insight and spiritual inspiration began to grow. You hear the voice of the inner guru as the sixth chakra begins to open. The inner voice of the sixth or the inner guru as the sixth chakra opens. The inner guru, who is that? The inner guru is yourself. Okay, now you know how they talk about the Trinity. 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? They talk about the Trinity. There are three personalities within inside of us, and they call it me, myself, and I, right? Okay, that's what they call it. Me, myself, and I. That is you, your spirit, and your soul. That is three entities within you, all right? With that being said, they say some people have multiple personalities. Now, I'm not talking about people that they say they're talking about as mentally insane, but they may say, well, this person acts this way on one day, and then this way, th this tomorrow they act this way, right? Or they say people have alter egos because people may act one way and then they may act another. That is the spirit, the soul, and yourself, your true self. That's what that is, okay? Me, myself, and I. Yes, we do have different traits of personalities. That is just like having different personalities, right? You have different traits of personalities, okay? You, for example, you may act one way when you're happy and act another way when you're angry. I mean, like another whole mindset. And then someone would say, well, I didn't even know they were capable of doing that. Well, that's because they really weren't capable, the real them. But when the other part takes over, which is usually the ego when someone does something nefarious, that's usually the ego taking over. The ego is very dominant for some people. Some people can't control their ego. It outpowers them. It overpowers them. And it takes over, right? This is why you have people sitting in prison right now for doing something stupid, for killing someone over something so minuscule. This is why you have that because people are often driven by their ego. They let their ego take control. They let their emotions control them. You should never allow your emotions to control you. You should always control your emotions, okay? If you can't control your emotions and you allow them to in fact control you, you will find yourself constantly getting into trouble. You will find yourself constantly getting into trouble. This is how people get killed because they can't control their emotions. This is why people also kill because they can't control their emotions. Okay. Now, the seventh stage is spirits. Your heart now is fully awake, awakened. You experience the divine and the conscious or the unity consciousness. This is what I'm talking about when I say black people need to unite. In order for us to truly unite, you have to achieve divine and unity consciousness, okay? See, this is why we have a lot of our people who are on low vibrational frequencies. You know, the people that we call haters, the ones who are always talking down on other people, always gossiping about somebody behind their back, always being a Debbie Downer or a Doubting Thomas and always saying something like, oh, that's not gonna work. Oh, did you know so-and-so tried to do this and they didn't they didn't do good or whatever? And they're always trying to talk down on your ideas and things that you want to try and make you feel bad about yourself, make you feel like you're not good enough and giving you all these low vibrational energies and signals. That is because they have not reached the divine unity in consciousness. They are, in fact, haters. They hate on other people because they hate themselves. If you ever notice people who are truly happy with themselves, they don't have time to hate on other people. That doesn't even cross their mind. Because when you are truly happy with yourself and pleased with yourself and pleased with your life, you don't worry about going around making other people's lives hell, going around causing other people misery and grief. You don't worry about doing those things. That is what low vibrational people do because they themselves are living mundane, you know, un, un um, happy lives. You know what I'm saying? And they also are miserable. And misery does love company. That's exactly true. Misery loves company. You think that a person who is miserable with themselves, with their life, with their way of thinking, that they can look at you be happy? They cannot look at you be happy. I, in fact, know someone who, when they're going through a hard time and things are going bad for them, you can't dare. You better not dare call them and tell them something positive that's going on with you because that ticks them off. They will literally tell you, oh, I don't want to hear about your good day. I don't want to hear about the good stuff you're going through when I'm living in this effed up situation. This is what they literally will say, okay? And I've known this person for quite some time, but this is what they will say. They don't want to hear your good news when they're dealing with bad news. Now, what do you think about that? That's crazy, right? At the end of the day, that's someone who can't control their emotions and misery, love and company. Because they're not doing good. They don't want to see you do good. That is a hater through and through. It tells you about haters in the Bible. It says, you know how they say use your uh, haters as motivators, right? That's in the Bible. It basically says, use your enemies as footstools. 
You should always use people who are hating on you and trying to do dirt to you. Use them to elevate yourself. Use that negative energy that they are trying to harness and trying to put on you. Turn it around. Flip the script. Use it to do something or achieve something positive. You see, a wise man once told me years ago when I was younger, he told me that the best revenge on someone who hates you, on someone who wants to see you fail, on someone who wants to keep you down and hold you back, the best revenge is success because they can't stand it. They cannot stand to see you doing good. I had a friend one time that every time I would call her and tell her something bad that was going on in my life, something I was going through, if I was having a problem, she was always so willing to listen. She never gave me any good advice, mind you. She never motivated me or inspired me or encouraged me. She always made it worse. Well, you know, it's going to get worse from here, don't you? Oh, you know, this is going bad, right? Yeah, she would never, ever tell me anything good or positive. She would always agree with me about the bad situation and in fact, tell me how it was going to eventually get worse. But then when I would call her, I started to notice this, that when I would call her and tell her good things that were going on in my life, she didn't have time to listen to that. She had all the time in the world to listen to the bad news I had, but when it was something good going on and I would call her to tell her, she never had time. She said, oh honey, I'm gonna have to call you back. These kids are just getting out of, just getting out of control. And she would always have something to do to get off the phone because she didn't want to hear any good news. These are people who are miser miserable and they want you to be miserable. If you notice, there are people who will be fine with you as long as you're on the same level of consciousness as them. As long as you're doing the same thing they're doing, as long as you're stuck in the same place that they're stuck. They will be so happy and fine with you and you will get along so good. But as soon as you start to rise to the next level of consciousness above where they are now low, low vibrating and you rise higher to a higher vibration, a higher level of frequency, and you start to become more spiritually aware, more spiritually in tune, this person will not have anything to do with you. They will be so mad. They can't take it. They will always have to talk down on you. They may just stop dealing with you altogether because they don't want to see you ascending, okay? They don't want to see you ascending, rising into the air to meet Jesus, as it says in the Bible, but literally, in reality, rising into the air to meet your Christ-like consciousness, to achieve and obtain your Christ-like consciousness in the air. They don't want to see you doing that because they can't do it. And you know why they can't do it? Because for one, they can't stop low vibrating. They just can't do it. Everything around them will stay in chaos and confusion and dismay and discord and disdain and mundane because they, in fact, cannot think positively. They have to think about negative things all day, every day. What they fail to realize is that thoughts are energy and thoughts become reality. When you think certain thoughts, you manifest them into your reality. This is what you do. You know how they say perception is reality? Well, your thoughts are reality because what whatsoever a man thinketh, that so is he. That's in the Bible. So if you're thinking negative things, only negative things will come to you. So that is why people can't rise above because they constantly focus all of their efforts and energy on the negative as opposed to thinking on the positive. And another thing, too, is a lot of people focus on beliefs, beliefs, right? I don't like to believe. I just don't like to believe. I like to know. You see, belief is like something that you, you want to get or something that you hope, right? You hope it's right. Your belief, that's something that you're hoping for, but you don't know for sure. You just hope. I would rather know the key word in knowledge or the root word is no, no knowledge. I would rather have knowledge of what I'm talking about. I would rather know something for a fact than to believe in something because beliefs are not always what we think. And guess what? Your beliefs change. Do they not? Your beliefs change. Facts don't change. Facts are the truth and undisputed, but beliefs, they in fact can change, right? So I don't like to deal in beliefs. I like to deal in knowledge, in facts, okay? 
So with that all being said, you come to a point of being alive in the world, but you are no longer of the world. For example, when you when you achieve, when you become fully awakened and you have the divine and unity consciousness, there's no longer any separation. The no giver, given or giving, no sense of I or me, just an awareness of oneness, of oneness, wholeness. You still live in the world, but you are no longer of the world. With that being said, this is what we need to achieve, people. This is what we need to know because I'm telling you when all these nefarious things start to happen, when the famine starts to come, when the possible power outages from the coronal mass ejection, when the elite start to make us live in a Hunger Games type society, if you have not reached your divine self, if you have not risen to your Christ-like consciousness, if you are still low vibrational in your energy, in your frequency, you will just not make it because you will succumb to them. You will have no choice because they, in fact, will use that to their advantage because they know what they're doing. They are very crafty and clever in their deceptive and uh, nefarious practices. So with that being said, you must be still alive in the world but not of the world. You must be operating on a higher level of consciousness. Therefore, when you free your mind and you're living and you're dwelling in this higher level of consciousness, the things that they're going to try to do in the coming months that they're going to be trying to, you know, um, mandatory immunizations, trying to take control of people's minds, you know, and trying to download thoughts into your mind and trying to take thoughts, extract thoughts from your mind. If you are not operating on the higher level of consciousness in your divine in, in your uh, divine self, then you are not going to be able to make it because they will in fact start introducing their own thoughts that they want to dictate your life. They will start introducing those thoughts into your brain. And then that is how you become a slave. Like President Kennedy said, they want to make everyone men, women, and children into slaves. Deceptive intelligence. Exactly, Tony. This is what they want to do. Deceptive intelligence, which means they will be giving you the intelligence that they, in fact, want you to have. It won't be your own. And in that being said, you will then not be able to rise into the higher stages of consciousness. That is what they're trying to stop. Because they know that there is a shifting in the atmosphere on this planet. They know that the roles are soon to be reversed. Those who were first will be last. And those who were last will be first. And they know this. And the reason they want to do these things that they're planning, bringing in this low vibrational energy, harnessing this antichrist-like energy, they want to do this because they want to stop the last ones from becoming the first ones. Those who took people into captivity will be taken into captivity. They don't want that to happen. So they're trying to stop it before it gets to the process, okay? That's right. Yes, the devil always deceives. Yes, the father of all lies. And so with that being said, I told you a month or so ago, that is why they do these certain things and have these, these certain events to occur that keep you on low vibrational energies. And also don't forget that the elites, they deal very well with numerology and all of the nefarious things that they, that, that, that they do. All of the nefarious things that they do, they deal with numerology, okay? With that all being said, for example, Trump. Okay, Trump got sick, so they say, right? With the coronavirus. All right, so with that all being said, guess what? 33 days before the election is when he got diagnosed with coronavirus. 33 days prior to the election. 33, why is the number 33 important? 33 degrees of masonry. The elites, they deal with numerology, okay? Pay attention. Now, with that all being said, when you have reached the seventh stage, there are no longer choices. You function totally in harmony with nature. 
okay? Everything is provided exactly as needed. This is why you must reach this seventh stage of development or consciousness, whatever you choose to call it. You need to reach the seventh stage because for the simple fact, when they start doing all these nefarious things and there's food shortages and, you know, people are starving and all of this, in order for you to have the things that you need to survive, you have to be in harmony with nature. You have to be in tune with the universe, okay? Because then and only then will you have exactly what you need. It will be provided for you. The Most High will provide these things to you. You don't have to wonder why. You don't have to ask yourself where it's going to come from. The Most High is going to bring it to you. That's just true. And if you are on a higher level of consciousness, even right now as we speak, you may be noticing that the Most High is sending people who are like-minded into your direct path of communication, sending people who are going to be significant in your life into your direct path. Because those are the people that you would need to cling to when these things start to happen, as things potentially and gradually get worse, okay? Now, as you progress through these stages, the material world seems very attractive at first, while the spiritual might seem empty and hard if it's followed, but it eventually leads to the experience of the true self and eternal bliss, so for those of you who think you're just so caught up with material things and you think, well, spirituality, you know, that's not going to get me what I want. The, the opposite is true. If you start engaging in your spirituality and getting more in tune with it, then that will actually lead you to the true self, which is, in fact, eternal bliss. It's not the material things, because do you know how many people are rich, wealthy, have all the things that money could buy, but they are so unhappy with themselves. They are they commit suicide, some of them. Because no matter how many material things you have, that does not buy happiness. And some people foolishly think that it does. It only buys the idea of happiness, okay? Not true happiness. True happiness comes from true self and eternal bliss will come to you when you are in your highest level of consciousness and you are free from thinking about all these material things and what you can have and what you need to do and who you should impress and all of those things. And there is nothing lacking in, in the life of a great yogi. He or she doesn't feel that anything has been given up. In fact, it's the reverse. Great yogis feel that they that by not following a spiritual path, eternal bliss has been renounced for the sake of a few passing moments of happiness. Yes, if you don't follow the true spiritual path, you are basically renouncing the eternal bliss that is coming to you. And guess what? This is talked about in the Bible when they say salvation. In order for you to get salvation, you have to accept Jesus into your life as your savior. That is an allegory. <clears throat> Excuse me. That is an allegory. In order for you to have salvation, you must accept the spirituality, the higher levels of consciousness into your mind and then achieve true self-awareness. And that is when you receive eternal bliss, which is salvation. Okay. Okay. And then the material world is like a dry garden waiting for the knowledge from the divine to bloom. In the material world, you only have the energy of the body on the spiritual path that you tap into the divine consciousness or cosmic energy, as I like to call it. Now, the material world is a prison. The spiritual path leads to unbounded freedom, unbounded freedom. With that being said, if you are living in a material world, that is indeed a prison. And that's why I call people that do that, who will love these exper um, expensive name brands and all of that, and fancy cars and big houses and love to just do it big and spend, you know, spend extravagantly for things or whatever. Those people are in prison. They are called vanity slaves. Okay? Vanity slaves. They, they are, in fact, in a prison because of the material things that they are bound by, like chains. So worried about what other people are thinking of them and so busy trying to impress others. When the only person you truly need to try to impress is yourself, right? The most high. The most high that is inside of you is in your consciousness. The kingdom of God is within you. You need to be trying to impress the most high, yourself, your God-like self, your Christ within you're always at a junction in your path, truth or illusion, material or eternal. The ego will constantly try to keep its limitations on you. So choose wisely. Everything you do is a spiritual act if you do it with awareness. With awareness. You have to be aware, alert, and knowing what you're going to do. Tony says, can I steal by Jordans? <laughs> Cut it out, Tony. 
Now you need to find your path. And when you find your path to spirituality, to your higher, le higher levels of consciousness, that is when you will find your inner peace. Be regularly disciplined and practice your spirituality. Don't be disheartened if you wander off the path because ultimately your spiritual journey becomes your way of life, like a lush oasis in a desert of mundane living. When you embark upon the path of self-mastery, then you will be in your spiritual, in your true physical and spiritual self. And you will be having and experiencing eternal bliss. You won't have to ask for anything because things will come to you. When you start vibrating on a higher level of frequency and becoming more aware, alert, in tune of the things going on around you and understanding that you should be giving as opposed to receiving, when you should be wanting to do things to improve other people's lives, not only just your own, when you get to that path, you will be fully awakened and you will be, you will be done with your journey as you have embarked upon a, a mastery of self-awareness, okay? With that all being said. So with that all being said, he's a vanity slave. With that all being said, <laughs> Maven says path to Tony's Jordans. He's just, trust me, he's just being silly. But with that all being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close out this live, everyone. Thank you, you Akata. With that all being said, I'm going to close out this live. I hope that you all take this information and use it wisely and know that you should not be engaging in ego driven practices. You should not be engaging in selfishness, but rather selflessness. And when you are giving, be sure that you are giving whatever you give from the heart, not from ego, not because you want recognition, not because you want to be praised, not because you want people to acknowledge it and look at you and say, oh, they did this for me or not because you want to use it against someone later. OK, so with that all being said, I'm going to close out this broadcast. I would like to thank all of you for tuning in once again to the Queen Amadai Shakur show. Make sure that you tune into my broadcast for your morning wake up call, which I will be doing in the morning people at 10 a.m. Okay. Tomorrow's morning wake up call won't be at nine on my channel. It will be at 10 a.m. Okay. So tune in to be there. Tony says, I'm starting the cult of Amadaya. <laughs> Tony cut it out. So with that all being said, I wish you all peace, love, and blessings and black power out to you all. And until next time, family, I will talk to you all again soon. Peace.